Hey, what's going on, guys? The Horror Man back on day 31 of Universal Monster Mayhem with a bonus review of Spanish Dracula. They did the mash. They did the monster. Mayhem. Well, guys, it's the final day of Monster Mayhem. We started with Dracula, and we're ending with Dracula. Throughout this month, Jason and I have made our way through this entire box set, watching all of the Universal Classic Monster movies in release order. According to the front of this, it says it's a complete 30 film collection, but there are actually more than 30 films in this set. Now, if you take away the 3D versions of Creature from the Black Lagoon and Revenge of the Creature, that still leaves an extra film, the Spanish version of Dracula. As you can see, I also own that version on VHS from the Classic Collection. As soon as we began Monster Mayhem, Jason and I agreed it would be a good idea to start with American Dracula and end with Spanish Dracula to space them out. Everything we've watched and reviewed in between has been in chronological order. But now it's all come full circle with our reviews of Spanish Dracula. The Spanish version of Dracula was filmed at the same time on the same sets as Todd Browning's classic. While Todd Browning filmed his version during the day, the Spanish version of Dracula was filmed at night. And although it's practically a shot-for-shot -shot remake, Spanish Dracula actually runs approximately half an hour longer. Again, I won't give a synopsis because I just don't think it's necessary. I'm sure you all know the story of Dracula. Instead, I'll give a few additional fun facts about Spanish Dracula. Director George Melford took the opportunity to watch the daytime footage to improve upon it with his version. He took what, in his opinion, didn't work in Browning's version and fixed it. He came up with what he thought were better camera angles, and honestly, I agree. And in a way, he even told the story a little better. He directed Spanish Dracula using stellar cinematography and even better editing than Browning's version. Obviously, Bela Lugosi is Dracula, so it's hard seeing someone else in that role from this time. I really like this unique portrayal, though. It's different. The actor wasn't trying to replicate Lugosi's performance. He made it his own, and I appreciate that. As for the character of Renfield, I think Spanish Renfield may be my favorite Renfield of all. I believe Jason would agree with that. We were discussing it while we were watching this. Along with the gorgeous shots and beautiful cinematography, the Spanish version of Dracula captures that atmosphere that the original also captured. But truth be told, maybe even more so since it was filmed at night. Oh, and we also get to see Spanish Dracula rise from his coffin, which we don't get to see in Todd Browning's American version. It's interesting hearing those classic lines with which we're all familiar delivered in Spanish. Another fun fact, the director couldn't even speak Spanish. His directions had to be translated to the cast and crew. I love the classic score over the opening credits. And I love that this Spanish version of Dracula utilizes hints of that music when Dracula rises from his coffin. The Spanish version of Dracula was considered a lost film for decades until it was found again in the 70s. At that time, it received even more praise from critics than it did when it was first released in 1931. Some even hailed it as a better film than Todd Browning's American counterpart. If you can put nostalgia aside, just throw it out the window, you might be able to see that Spanish Dracula is a better movie. I know there are fans who agree with that as well, and I'm one of them. I prefer Spanish Dracula. I'll be discussing that more when Jason and I rank all 31 of these Universal Classic Monster movies in a live stream. Soon. Please be sure to check back for that. But until then, what are your thoughts on Spanish Dracula? Comment below and let me know. And please be sure to check out Jason's review. Well guys, that's it. We've made it through Monster Mayhem. It's over.
This was a long time in the making. It's something Jason and I have both been wanting to do for years. We discussed possibly doing it for the 31 Days of Horror in October one year, but then I came up with Monster Mayhem. Jason loved the idea, so we got right on it, started watching and filming our reviews. And even though we may have finished Monster Mayhem, we will tie into these universal classic monster movies with some videos in June. Jason and I really hope you've enjoyed Monster Mayhem as much as we have. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up and be kind. Subscribe.